Praise the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. Another segment of the Word on the Streets, Ghetto Gospel Ministries. Jesus is Lord, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I want to come down to the tracks. A lot of demonic things happen down here. Drugs, druggies, graffiti, demonic stuff. But Jesus was really good at parables. He could really break things down for people so they could understand things better. He would use things around them. He was the best at it. Who could beat God, right? But anyways, come with me. I want to talk to you about a, an important parable about the train. You know what I'm saying? So, find out is J. that a J? Nah, ain't no J, man. Come on. Anyway, I wanted to come down to the track. And I want you to consider the train track. Based off, we're going to read today. If you can get your Bibles opened up, my brothers and my sisters. We're going to read out of this, the first book of Thessalonians. We're going to read chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 14. I just want to read this one verse. It says, Now we exhort you, brothers, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. And be patient towards all men. See that you render no evil for evil to any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. I want to stop right there because one of the key verses there was be patient towards all men. And even myself, you know, I've been in the Lord roughly 13 years and I learned a lot. And one thing I learned, you got to treat people like a train. If you notice a train is mad heavy, it don't just stop. It got to slow down and then stop people are mad heavy with sin they whole life and here you are you got saved you're excited you want to preach to everybody and they mama but you get bent out of shape discouraged and disappointed when your best friend from the world don't want to hear what you got to say your own mother your father your sister whoever you get my point your home girls that you used to club with whatever but the point i'm trying to prove is you would be more effective a whole lot better at, at, at winning them over to Christ If you would take this advice Stop focusing on all the sin in their life When they ain't even giving their life to Christ yet You understand what I'm saying? Because you overlooking the little clues and signs They're showing you that they're actually drawn to the gospel What you need to do is plant the seeds in them And then back off And let God marinate those seeds with the light of heaven And when the watering of the word See, your problem is, you want to tell them about Christ, then call them tomorrow, tell them about Christ, then call them tomorrow and tell them about Christ. And you know what they say about you? Oh, he don't get it. He's always, I can't even have a decent conversation with this man. He, he only talk about Jesus. And then you get defensive because you, it's a false sense of, of, of being uh, loyal to Christ. You're like, oh, that's all I want to talk about. Of course, that's all I want to talk about too, but you got to do it wisely with seasoning. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, Paul said it in the scripture. He said, I preach the gospel with seasoning. In our terms, ghetto gospel, we would say, you know, sazon, a little bit of Royco, a little bit of sofrito, get it cracking. Basically, what I'm saying is, do it naturally. You know what I'm saying? I, I really hope you understand what I'm saying. Because you look at the train over here. You can hear the train screeching as it's coming down when it's gonna make a stop. You know what I'm saying? You don't get mad at the train if it don't stop right away. Cause the train ain't gonna stop it that way. You gotta slow down and then stop. So the people around you, that's how it's gotta be with them. You gotta be patient. That's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is patience. I mean, when I first gave my life to Christ, man, I got mad at people when they didn't wanna hear what I had to say about Christ. I didn't understand that the Bible says the God of this world has blinded the minds. The God being the devil, lowercase g-o-d, read it yourself in Corinthians. So if he blinded their minds, what you got to do is as you're shining the light of Christ and you got to walk and talk and act like Christ, that's the difference. If you're walking, talking and living like Christ by praying for them and fasting, by nature the demons got to leave them. Like I was saying, my brothers and my sisters, you know, as we was as we was going through the word, here we got a train coming. You know what I'm saying? So 
you got yourself a, a, a still train, but you know, got it so good to get you an actual train. And you notice he's honking his horn, he letting me know he's coming through. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the people in your life, they honk. years. Your man been selling drugs his whole life. Had no no father growing up. Your homegirl been in the pain her whole life. All she know is how to, you know what I mean, kind of, you know, finagle the bagel for money and do sinful things. So how you gonna stop a train that diesel? What you gotta do is move how Christ operated wisely. Paul the Apostle was in the marketplace. He would've just stand there and bug out. He'd move up on a couple brothers on the block, pull up to the side, Nice shoes, brother, would you get those? Hey, you know, in the midst of this conversation, start talking about the Lord. Don't get me wrong, there's gonna be a time where you gotta just straight up bang and hit a brother with the gospel full blown, but you gotta learn wisdom and, and discern when and how to say things. So my brothers and my sisters, as we wrap up this word, you know, God is so good, he gave us a sign. If you can look down here, Isaiah says he was wounded for with transgressions and bruised for with iniquities. Imagine these going through your hand. Would you do this for the people you love? Anyways, I wanted to talk to you as I was walking away. You know, when I think of the love of Christ, and I think of how much he loved us, that he was willing to give his life for us, and it puts tears in my eyes, yo. You imagine one of these going through your hand? Anyways, as I'm meditating on seeing this nail, this sign is definitely for you. And I, I want you to know, I want you to be encouraged that no matter what, the love of God and the light of Christ always overcomes the power of darkness. And you know, I looked over here on this wall, if you see right here, you know what I'm saying? It says there is no God. But I'm here to proclaim, I'm here to proclaim something to whoever wrote that. The Lord wants to save your soul. There is a God. He died on the cross and rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is Lord. GhettoGospel.com. Word on the street.